Welcome back on the AM show. Let's focus on education now. We all know about the GET Fund, but for those who may not have a proper scope of what it does, what is the GET Fund? What is it per law supposed to do? And what are the latest bits when it comes to the scholarships available and who can benefit and what must be done? Well, to answer all of those questions and more, we've put together uh, this interview, this conversation, and we have joining us the, the administrator of the GET Fund, Dr. Richard Ampofo Bwedu. He joins us in the studio. Doc, a very good morning to you. Thank you for joining us. Morning. Right. So I think to set the tone for the conversation, especially for those who may have, uh, for one reason or another, lost track of what the GET Fund is supposed to do. What is the GET Fund? What is it supposed to do? Thank you. Um, I'll first of all, would like to say Afishiapa to your, your cherished um, viewers and then listeners. The GET Fund um, is a short form of Ghana Education Trust Fund. Um, it's been in existence for over um, more than 20 years. It was set up in the year 2000, Act uh, 581 of 2000, Act of Parliament. Mm. It was during the regime of the um, uh, President Rawlings that it was set up, but actually its operationalization was done in August 2001 by uh, the then President, President uh, Kufuo. So you see that even if you're looking at Get Fund um, in its uh, growth period, you can see that Get Fund is in its youthful age. Mm. The act um, sets the fund where um, originally, that is traditionally, it was a 2.5% VAT, but um, it's been moved recently to 2.5% straight levy. Um, the main objective is um, providing supplementary funding for um, all the levels of education, that is tertiary, secondary, and then primary. And then it also supports the ministry and its agencies in their activity. Right. The, um, the, it, it has a 17-member uh, board of trustee, and um, this money collected is distributed through parliament. Um, with what they call the distribution formula. Right. So get fund as an oversight responsibility from Parliament in terms of its operation, in terms of um, disbursement of its financial um, operation. Um, I will say that historically about 70% of get fund, uh, the money, the accruals that come to get fund is used for infrastructure there are others too, but scholarship has... How, what had, percentage did you say? 90%? 70%. 70%. Normally goes to infrastructure okay. development. 5% goes to scholarship. But the history of scholarship started about uh, 14 years ago. Get Fund created a niche for itself where in the act it's supposed to give supplementary funding to scholarship secretariat for basic, uh, for uh, local scholarship. And then um, that point in time, there used to be the Northern uh, Scholarship Scheme mm -hmm. uh, at the secondary level. So that too, um, they did that for them. But there was, um, something that was missing in the scholarship that uh, they saw that uh, the scholarship secretariat were doing. In that respect, it was um, um, the general scholarship that every people, uh, every, um, the Ghanaian know that uh, you apply to the scholarship secretariat, they give you um, a scholarship for you to move through the undergraduate, postgraduate uh, courses. But 
um, foreign scholarship was something that was missing. Right. So I would like to give the four categories of scholarship and sponsorship that Get Fund does. That's what the Get Fund saw as a loophole and from 14 years to now living uh, sponsoring. So the first one is uh, in the act, they're supposed to give funding for faculty development through GTEC. In the act, it is NCT, which is now GTEC. GTEC is Ghana Tertiary Education Commission. So they provide um, money for them and um, brilliant students and um, those that are in the uh, faculty, like the TEs, they give them a scholarship, both local and foreign. So that's the first type of scholarship that Get Fund does. Mm -hmm. The second one is, like I said, the general one that we know. The third one was cap capacity building. On the capacity building, we find out that, um, let me give an example, like um, um, the police service, um, where there is a need to train some of them in terms mm. of cyber security, in terms of cr uh, criminology, and mm. get fun, uh, help. To step in and do that. And do that. In right. the um, um, police, the, um, we do that in the, the, the um, judicial service. We've funded um, people in that um, uh, organization, and they've also gone out to. Uh, uh, learn and um, the medical um, uh, uh, that is um, in the medical field to also help people to uh, do that. And then there is a, a, the fourth one, which is uh, sponsorship, mm. where um, we do short courses, like two weeks. You can sponsor people to go and do a two week course and, and then come back. And then uh, if you look at um, um, Prempe College and then Mamfi Girls, who get fund, they go sponsorship to go outside the country. They did the world robotics. And luckily for us, all of them won. So these are the four um, classes of spon uh, sponsorship and scholarship that we do. Mm. Interesting bit. I, I have so many questions on my mind for you. But especially as you're focusing on the scholarships, later we'll talk about infrastructure, right? The other arm. The scholarship secretariat, you know, gets some supplementary funding from you, right? And uh, I mean, I, I, I was a beneficiary at a point. I traveled to Cuba on a scholarship from the University of Ghana because I was within a certain uh, group in there. Uh, there has been a lot of talk about some of those scholarships. Uh, do those directly, do you have any connection with how those are disbursed or that is purely the work of the scholarship secretary? That is purely the work of scholarship secretary. We just give them lump sum of money for support. Because it's, um, it's, it's not, we are not the, um, the agency that funds scholarship secretary, but we give them supplementary funding. Right. Hmm. All right. I'll come back to other matters uh, later. So walk us through. In a year like this, um, I know there will be undergraduates who would want to benefit from your different scholarship schemes, graduates as well. Walk us through the program categories that, that we are looking at for these people who may want to benefit from scholarships. Later, I'll leave some, some stuff for the back burner, but let's focus on the scholarships. Okay, so for now, our online portal has been opened. That is... Um, and um, one, you must be a Guinean. Okay. So the qualification, you must be a Guinean of sound mind. Two, you should have gotten admission at the tertiary level. Three, the tertiary level that you are applying for should have accreditation by GTEC. Okay. And then the fourth one is that you have to apply. <laughs> because right. if you don't apply, I've, 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 um, there's been instances that people come in late during the time and then yeah. wants, they want uh, sponsorship from us. They write to us, and then some of the universities write directly to us on students that are in their faculty and they, they think that... That require have, it. They Unfortunately, they haven't applied. If you don't, you don't apply, then there's no way that we can help you. So the fourth one is very important. 
I think it may even be the most yes. important yes. bit. Because I've heard those stories time and again. Oh, but this person qualifies, but the person didn't apply. And is yours, is yours a rolling deadline or it's a hard deadline? When it, once it's shut, it's shut for that academic year. Yes, exactly. So for this year, we started mid of December and we're hoping that... You mean I, December 2023? Yeah, and December and by July 31st. Sorry, January 31st. It's that shut. Is, yeah, it is shut. This, um, there, there is, um, initially, people were applying with hard uh, copies and all those, and you can see how yeah, the whole thing was. And a lot of people come to the fund, and even on the deadline, you, you, you can't even drive through getting to get funds because you see a lot of students. And now an online portal has been opened. At the end of it, I'll give you the, mm. um, the numbers and then the link that you have to go through it. So we did this and um, it has benefited us a lot in terms of the application and controlling and then even the scholarship management. I see. Now you've, we'll get to the other bits, but the program categories. Um, yes, there are graduate and undergraduate. Are there any specific programs you target or is it free for all? No matter what you're doing, once your institution has the accreditation, once there's GTEC on board and all of that, they can apply. What, so, what is the stratification? So it is for all, provided it is accredited by GTEC. So we loaded the courses that were accredited by GTEC onto our portal. Okay. So those are, those are the ones that... Uh, we think that we have to sponsor those that are accredited. So, so we can safely say that all the public um, universities, I don't know about the technical universities yet, I'm not bringing them in, but all the, the mainstay universities, the, the five plus of them, all have GTEC accreditation. And so all their courses, and I'm asking this intentionally because I know that there are some courses, some programs that are still, while they are being run by even some of the major universities, public universities, they are still having issues with accreditation of those courses. That is why I'm posing this question. Okay. So that people like that don't end up applying and then later, oh, your course is not accredited and all that. So Okay, so if I should bring clarity to, to that question, I said that those courses that have been accredited by GTEC, mm. So we picked it from GTEC. It was a collaboration between GetFund and then GTEC. Okay. And on the portal, you will find those courses in there. So that is it. And then let me also clarify this um, point too. It is for both private schools and public schools. It is not okay. five universities. Now, no, I only cited those because at least those I can vouch for and say that for GTEC, as for the private, you don't know which ones, and I can't mention names. That's yeah. why I only use them as an example. So even the schools have been loaded onto the portal. So when you go in, you'll find your school, if it is accredited. You'll find your school, and then you just take it, and then the courses that you are doing. So okay. for instance, if you take a private university, and then you go onto the portal, it will show you the courses in your school that have been accredited so that mm. you can just take it and then move on. The system is so free. It is cumbersome. We intentionally did that. The system is cumbersome. No, it is not cumbersome, but there are a lot of questions for you to answer. Okay. But it is very simple. It okay. is very simple, but it is loaded, if I should put it right. W it why is, is that? No, it is, it, is, it is intentional. There are some of the questions that are repetitive. Mm. We did it for, for a reason. Okay. What reason? So you, 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 no, that leave that to us. Yeah, you. Yeah, but it's interesting to find out. I mean, no, you're here no, having you a see, conversation on you see, your platform, uh, and the questions, and how some of them are okay, intentionally let me, protected. Let me, let me, what, let, why me is let me, let me just uh, say this. Um, your credibility is also something that we just want to tease out. Okay. So some of the questions we intentionally, we can, we can just paraphrase it in a, another way to mm. see if you're going to answer it. So the same. person answers a similar question, question. with A answer, mm -hmm. and the next time, similar question with B answer. Then you, you start seeing discrepancies, discrepancies, and you're asking yourself whether this person is genuine, yeah, right? So they are sifting is, through. Yeah, those are some of it. Because mm. we, we are not getting a chance to interview the students. 
So by your correspondence, uh, we're able to sift something out of, out of that. All right. Thanks for those answers. I, I deliberately posed the question about those courses and accreditation, and you've answered. So basically, if you're applying, you go on the website, you must ensure that you are checking for both your institution and then the program that you're looking for. Once both are there, you have the green light. You can go ahead, right? Yes. yes. Okay. Now let's look at, uh, beyond this, what else? So the process is purely online? Yes, it's purely, purely online. Yes. Okay, no submission of hardcore documents. No. So that there are no guru boys in the system, right? That is it. Mm. And make sure that you are minimizing the, the tendency of somebody even coming. So if you come to get fund and it's of scholarship and you want to see the administrator, you won't. I see. You'll not be an out. But how do you know? Yeah. Someone may come with a different reason and all of a sudden they are in your office and they are talking about, oh, and the scholarships and this and that. What do you do then? Do you call security to walk them out? Oh, I will, I will politely let you go down and follow them. I see. Yes. Uh, there's also talk from time to time, before I get back to guruism and the guru boys, there's also talk from time to time that regardless of which political party is in power, there will always be some arm twisting, some influencing when it comes to get fund and scholarships. How true is it? You see, um, I, I, I always sit here, I think this is about the fourth time from last week to this week that it is because it is, it is something that we all, you know, you see, it's, come, come face it's, to face it's, with. It's based on perception. Based on perception. Yeah, based on perception. And um, last year, November, we did a stakeholders meeting. I, I, I think it was an interview some time past that um, one of the, at one of the radio stations, a person said that, hey, it looks like get fund. You people fear get fund and... It looks like it's um, something like a cult or something. They, 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 and they were even saying that, oh, you, your position, the administrator, people fear you. And mm. I said, ah, I'm a simple man. Me, I, op I operate an open door window. When you come to my office, I can laugh with you. And I, so that myth has to change. In our uh, stakeholders meeting that we had um, in November, that is the reason why we've even decided that every year, we're going to open up, let people know what we've done for the past year. We review what we want to do the following year. And then people criticize and then um, give us constructive ideas. And then we move on. That has shaping the GET Fund till date. And um, for 2019, for instance, and I, I, I always want to use this as an example, all students that applied on our portal Medical students, pharmaceutical students, nurses, and then health and allied uh, courses. Mm -hmm. All of them we give scholarship to. <clears throat> all so of those all of, them, all of them. All of them. Yes. Wholesale um, uh, awarded to them. Those were the times. Why, why was that? It was the committee. We have a committee that's, that does the selection. And I'm not even part of that committee. So they decided that, okay, uh, for this year, this is what we're going to do. But every year they change their mode of um, how the award will be. I, I can tell you in 2023, last year, mm -hmm. what happened was all the students that got four A's and above, and all ladies, not all the students, all gents that got four A's and above, and all ladies that got three A's and above, they were awarded. Sponsorship. So if this is what is happening there, does it presuppose that there is a particular being shown in there? Mm. If in 2019, all uh, pharmacy students, all medical uh, students, and then health and allied that... Um, that but, but, but like you said, the committee sits and decides year on year what to mm -hmm. do. Mm -hmm. um, this is just a a grouping, okay, mm -hmm. those in the medical sphere. Mm -hmm. how, how about the others? And over the years, there have been claims. There's, there's a saying that there is no smoke without fire. Mm -hmm. And even where you come to the scholarship secretariat, which is, I can call it in a way, 
an extension, an appendage of what you do. I benefited from there when things were pretty rigorous. It was a system. There was nothing you could do. Unless you were in a certain bracket, you wouldn't benefit. That was how I ended up in Cuba for a year. But we've also seen the saga of, even if I may stretch it a bit to the scholarship secretariat, where certain officials in government, certain people affiliated to government have benefited in the past, in the present, you know them. I don't need to mention names. And by extension, the Get Funds Own Scholarship Program, or bursary. Um, would you say this is uh, not, not founded, not grounded in some truth? I'm giving you what has happened in there. And you see... Um, Doc, are there no, never, no, are, are there no, never, no, are there no, never no. political influences to get you to... Um, award X person a scholarship versus Y person. Are you saying that in your capacity as administrator of the GET Fund, how long has it been now? Seven years. Seven years. You have never encountered any political influencing to get you to award a scholarship. Is that what you're saying? It will come. But you see... So it comes? Nothing. No, let me tell you. No, I'm asking, no. Does it, has it come? It will come. Let me, let me, let me be frank to you. It will come. But the ability for you, mm, in order not to fall into that trap, is for you to bring up something that will forestall those uh, coming. So, for instance, this online portal, mm, if not for the online portal, there is, there is a possibility of somebody coming and then saying that, oh, um, the system is going on, so why don't you do this and that and that? So the online portal is something that is curtailing those um, processes or those influence for it to come. Mm. Let's go back. In the year 2019, there was um, this um, um, an audit that leaked out from the Get Fund. And Actually, that auditing was something that when I came to the office, because of the perception that we had, I said that, okay, I wrote to the minister, let the audit service come and then audit get fund, so that if there are some of the things that they are not doing right, we can learn from it and then do it better. So it was a paid for audit. But the moment they went through it and then saw the whole thing and um, a lot of all that, we saw that it was on the air. And I was even called to the, um, I'm saying that I'm the first person that was called to the special prosecutor. And what happened afterwards? It was then later on that they got to know that even this was something that it was. You had it, called for. I had called for. Mm. And Based on the, um, the, uh, the outcome, we've been able to streamline Get Fund. And that is why, uh, for now, I'm here, even talking about how students can go through the system and then get uh, sponsorship from Get Fund. Our online portal is also being what? Um, we are now communicating and doing a PR work for even students to apply through our portal. Mm. So that is it. So, it is, you, 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 you put systems into place that will check some of these things. Yes, but, right. but no, system, is no system is foolproof. Even yeah. in the most advanced democracies, the systems sometimes, I mean, famously, who would have thought, uh, this is a bit of a wide example, but who would have thought that President Trump would, you know, in, in a place like the United States, would, would call for his supporters to in, invade the Capitol and suggest that, the election had been rigged in a democracy like the United States. Who, who would have thought, right? So are you saying, I mean, do you still get those pressures coming on you? Let's say within the last window, 2023, or even this current window, mm -hmm. has there been pressure from any quarters on you? I don't, I don't need you to mention names. Is, does that see, pressure still come? You see, what I'm trying to achieve mm. is for that perception. Mm. That, you, you said it, that is nothing that is 100% proof. Mm. So if I can get the perception is now being eroded and mm. then they trust the system and they know that at least if 
you apply and you don't have somebody hmm, to just follow you up or something, you're going to get it. That's what I'm trying to achieve. And I salute I cannot, you. I cannot get 100%, but right. that is it. That right. Is it. I mean, if, you, if you've moved from even 65% or 50% uh, to 80% plus, it's, it's, it's quite an appreciation. And of course, you want to work on the public sentiment. But still, I'll go back to that question. Yeah. Are, still, are, are people still pressuring you? It will definitely come. All the time? It will definitely come. Like I'm saying, last year, I sat down and then people came. And I told them, you know, we've closed their portal. And once we've closed their portal and the person didn't apply, there is no way that the person can get that um, admission. I liken it to you going to um, University of Ghana. Mm. For instance, you go to University of Ghana and you want application. And you want to you want an application outside the application deadline and you want your student to go and then have education at university of ghana once the system is over you can't and that is how it is so you try and put measures and then streamline your processes that will make those system work that all right is it. let's talk about the guruism guru boys and girls and all of that from time to time, you still hear talk of that. Are they still in the system? Have you completely got rid of them? I don't, I don't, I don't have. <laughs> that, that, that guruism is not something that is pertaining. I guess. And I can talk for get one, if it is get one. You can open the lines and then ask them. I did this at the stakeholders meeting. Somebody came and then said that, no, it is not true. He came and then presented something. That shows that somebody has been given scholarship through the GET Fund and maybe A, B, C, and D. Lo and behold, it turned out that for three years, foreign, uh, three years, foreign scholarship, we haven't done it. And what he was holding was, a was it a GET Fund. No, it okay. wasn't a GET Fund letter here. But he was saying that it is GET Fund, it is GET Fund. And then we even zoom it on our, uh, uh, the, and when I got it, it was a different thing. You see, people don't know the difference between get fund and then the others. Mm. They mix them. Okay. And it came, I even threw a challenge that if somebody has done that in the past, they should come up. Okay. It's, I don't think that it is something that is happening at get fund. And you can, you can, the feedback that we are getting is positive. I can tell you, when you go outside the country, the way that we've managed our funding, of uh, um, students are paid on time, their stipend goes on time, and now most of the, um, the universities outside Ghana are now coming to get fund. They fly all the way to get fund, and then they come and sit down with us. With um, There are some of the schools that tell us that if we give them five students, they are going to give us two out of them free tuition. And then there are others that are coming out with new one because they've gotten confidence in the system. And for instance, when we started with the, um, the online portal and then our payment and the monitoring aspect of it, currently um, <clears throat> our team will be in the Ashanti region. They've done um, the schools in the universities in um, Greater Accra, where they had a meeting with the registrar and the vice chancellors of the various universities. They've come to realize the way that get fun is exceptional when it comes to payment and all those things. And for now, you just getting a get fund uh, award letter, getting the get fund award letter gives you the confidence to go and uh, register, even if you haven't paid. Mm. Mm. You, you spoke about um, stipends and all of that. We've interacted with a lot of Ghanaian students abroad who have had challenges, uh, both from the scholarship secretariat, and I want to believe some of them or on get fund scholarships. No. no. How 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 consistent have you been in terms of paying these stipends? How far back does it go? I can I, I, I can I can always have my team check. That's why I mentioned scholarship secretary. You can check but hundred times in there what you get out there. You come and then congratulate us. How much do you give us stipends across the board? It I depends. Mean, it depends. Depends, depends on where the people but, are going, yeah, right? Most most of the time I think it's a thousand dollars or so. For for what period of time? For a month. For a month. So what we've decided is um, we're not doing the selective payment of 
fees and then the others. We write to the school and let them know our plan that when the student is going, we give them a third of the stipend. In the month of February, latest by March, we give them the, um, the second tranche of it. And the month of July, we finish it up with uh, the July. So the first tranche will be how much? One third. One third? Yeah, one of, third. Of, of how much? So every month they get a so thousand. So if, supposing it's um, uh, 12,000 12, pounds, mm -hmm. 12,000 dollars, it depends on where the student is, but let's use 12,000. So the person gets the... 3,000 yeah, every 3, quarter. Yeah, every quarter. Yeah. That's how we've been doing. And we've run, run, run it uh, over the years. And because of that, that's why I'm saying that the positive things are coming to the front. You can check from past students and ask about our stipend payment. How long has this, this been, how long has it been this consistent in terms of stipend payments? From, as, from when you started? Yeah. From when you took over? No, no, it wasn't. Because it was, I'm saying that it was after the um, infrastructure audit. Which so, was when? In 20, we did it in, I think the report came in 2019 or so. Okay. Yeah. And so since 2019, we've had that consistency. Yeah. It was something that initially, the first year, I didn't know how it was done because when um, I came into office, just three months later, scholarship was done or something like that. So one of the scholars. So it just followed what was being done in there. But you have to be innovative and then think through things and then solve it. That's why we are um, we're made to um, our appointment um, hands on. So you have to, and there has been so many innovative things that we put into the fund. And for that reason, Get Fund is not the old Get Fund that people know. Okay, um, I, I've gone through a bit of the the applications portal, but I also saw here when it came to the guidelines this bit, and I just want to ask you about for the benefit of those watching us, what the things are that could disqualify them. For example, I see here, you say, when signing up on the portal, ensure correct spelling of your names with the initial letter capitalized. I know there are some of these applications where some of these minute errors could, could cost you. Is the same with the Get Fund? Yes. You see, um, for last year, for instance, about 96,000 students applied. And the system is said that the number of times that you go to the portal, when I sit on my laptop, you can see? I can see. And monitor. And yeah, the number of times. So if there is um, a controversy, I can tell you why you didn't get the application. You didn't supply this, you didn't supply this. And you see, you, you should know that um, so like, um, from what I was saying, 96, at the end, 47. After the first 15 by the system itself, 47 were seen to uh, have completed and given the green light to move into the, um, how, um, I, I, what I mean is that the, uh, the, uh, the 47 mm -hmm. were successful <laughs> And then at the end, only 4,200 got the award letters when uh, the committee sat. Mm. So this, you should know that in terms of percentage, even those that were successful, 10% um, got it. Mm. So you shouldn't make any error when you, you're trying to apply. So take note of those steps that we've listed. If you're supposed to do A, please do as the system is asking, requiring of you. I'm here to let them know that you can go back and then make corrections mm. till 31st December. So if you've made a mistake in the you can 31st go back, January. Sorry, 31st January. Right. You can go back to the system and then make those corrections because those things can take you out of the system. It is meticulous and you have to go through. Whatever they tell you to do it, <clears throat> you have to. Don't try and then beat the system because the system will find you out. And I would like to also- So leave nothing to chance. Yeah, leave nothing to chance. I would like also people to know that 
It's not everybody that apply will get it. People think that by choice they have to be, they have to get it. The um, award from the past has about 70% going to STEM program. That is science, technical, science, technology, technology engineering, engineering, mathematics. Mathematics. 30% to um, the arts. humanities. Yeah, the arts. We are biased when it comes to gender. We try to. So even in the 70 or 30 classes, if there is, um, in terms of, like I said, whilst the gents were given four years and above, we lowered it to three years and above right. for the ladies. And then one thing that we introduced in this year is also um, on uh, disability. Okay. So they will also be uh, considered in terms of um, their challenges. Whatever their challenges are, will be factored in. Yeah, it will be factored in. I see. And, and that's, that definitely is something that warms my heart. Um, I believe the UCC had its first visually impaired lecturer recently, and we're all happy about that. And in law class, I have sat there with visually impaired colleagues who have done excellently well. Yeah. Uh, some of them, one graduated from um, the Ghana School of Law recently, another one had traveled abroad. These are, uh, disability is not inability, inability or yes. incapacity. We've, we've sponsored disabled uh, students mm. uh, in a foreign Right. In the past, yeah. Let's talk about these scholarships. So for the undergraduates and the graduates, starting with the undergraduates, so you're, you're targeting diploma, HND, degree holders. What, what else should we know for those who, are, who would opt to apply for these? What, what else should they know? Um, in terms of, um, there are some... Uh, so I'm talking column. about the applications for no, 2023, 2024. Yeah. What, what column, should they... A column that requires them to attach documents to it. Okay. This is so, something that is also very important. For instance, if the application is asking you that your nationality, you should show that you are a Guinean. There are some of them that um, add voter register as a proof of Guinean. Yeah, citizenship. At the first stage, because you've um, that requirement, mm. you've met it, mm. there will be um, an acknowledgement that you've gone through the process. Mm. Correct me. But moving but forward. But when the system is sifting itself, purging itself, you find out that you'll be out, you'll be, you'll be kicked out of the So system. you accept the Ghana card? Accept the Ghana card and then the passport as a form of um, identification, your proof of nationality. And there are some that, surprisingly, they apply, mm -hmm. but they don't add their admission letter. Okay. Yeah. When they were, they applied everything correct, but they don't <clears throat> load their application letter. So how would we at the fund, know that you've got an admission. So take note of that. And then you should apply personally. You should apply yourself. Yourself. But how are you going to be able to check? You're not going to be behind the computer when the person is applying. You see, hmm, there was an incident that happened. And I always say this. There was a mother that did that for the son. And at a portion that you have to put your name, who is the applicant? The lady put her name there. Put her name there. The person got the award in the name of the mother and all the other documents, the picture and everything was the son. So it came to light and we had to cancel it. Wow. That is it. It is something that happened. A genuine mistake, but it was because the parent was parent. so. Even if you're going to do it for the person, it's guidance, just like the the GHS to HHS SHS applications, yes. right? Guide you can fill, but ensure that you're putting the right details in. And then the other thing is um, the email that you use 
in communicating to us. Mm. That will be say, the same mood that we're going to write to them. Some create the email for this purpose. <clears throat> they forget about the password. So <laughs> you generate it to them and they are not able to. You quite remember that I told you that about 600 students mm. were picked and then they gave them that. At the end of it all, about 300 responded. We had to send emails to the rest. Mm. Did a text message. Call them two times. Some of them responded. Some of them never came back. Wow. Okay. And so this also applies for the graduates' yeah, yeah, programs, yeah. right? Yes, it's yeah. practically the same, the thing. same thing. So pay attention to detail. Ensure you're feeding them the right information. Ensure you're applying yourself. If someone is applying for you, hopefully the person has all the required details, right? Yes. Okay. Let, let me bring in this interesting question before you cap it off with your final thoughts and whatever else in terms of what work you're doing, the Get Fund. There's also this interesting bit about you mentioned infrastructure when you started the conversation. I'm going to take you back to that. Infrastructure in our universities, public institutions. Uh, you take the University of Ghana, for example. When I was there, I mean, it's been a rolling problem. Is it the case that the Get Fund has somehow been collateralized, for which reason you are unable to help these institutions of higher learning put up these structures? You know that even today, those problems are still happening. The last time there was talk about the UG and uh, increased rates for accommodation facilities, KNUSD and all of that. What, what role do you play in the mid midst of all that? This is a question that I will need about two hours. Two hours, eh? It's a question for the gods, eh? It's a, no, no, it's, it's not a question <laughs> for the gods. But you see, infrastructure presentation takes a whole lot. It takes a whole lot of uh, dynamics. And even the universities, if I come and tell you how projects in the um, universities have been run over the years, you will understand that system. So I promise that this year I will come for infrastructure um, talk and then you get to know how Get Fund has been abused over the years, even though they are um, the supporting uh, agency that helps tertiary education and then the others. So I'll, I'll, I'll find time and then talk about it. No, but it we, want, we want something very, on do you, We want do you, something on Do you have time? Uh, I can, I I, can, I can give you three minutes. Three minutes? Yes. Okay. So if you take the tertiary sector, for instance, what happened in the past was that allocation is given to GTEC, Ghana Tertiary Education Commission, and then they, by a distribution, give to the universities. So for instance, um, let's see if University of Ghana get five million. What happened in the past was they were involved in multiplicity of projects. So what happened is, um, in terms of procurement, they have five million. Instead of using that five million to do a single project and finish it in record time, they split it mm. to about three projects. What that means is a contractor working on that project can only go to a certain amount, even if he has the capacity to complete it. For instance, if you split uh, five million into two million, two million, one million, on three projects. The contractor on one million can work up to a certificate of one million and then complete, uh, that is for the year. And it will if come it is, to a, a grinding halt. It will come to a grinding halt. This has dragged over the years. And I have a presentation based on that. So what you find out is that multiplicity of projects has constituted to many of the projects but, but how how are you contributing to regulating that so yes. that so, so that you don't have that, these you can complete said, projects that's why i said that it is a whole discussion on its own because from yes, but you can you can share with us how okay, you are trying from 2017 to solve the 2017 the first thing was in the tertiary university the board decided that no new project should be done in the tertiary sector so okay. we brought a whole focus on old ones old ones for you to complete all the old ones so that was the, the first step. And then we find out that, you see, the contractors doing it too are businessmen. 
Mm -hmm. So they work, and then when they see that um, the contract that they are doing doesn't compensate them economically, they just stop. You have to revise the rate for the contractor to go back because if it is not economically viable, it means that the contractor cannot go. So it comes back to the get fund, and then um, at first, so for it example, wasn't, it wasn't for example, inflation. Fund. You have to take. You see the inflation, inflation. The inflation aspect is catered for something they called um, the um, um, the the there is um, um, uh, something that so there's a mechanism. In there's place. a mechanism right. that compensates them. That, this is done by the statistical service, and then um, um, the. Building and Roots Research Institute Index, that compensates them. But if the contract goes on for a longer year, that compensatory factor doesn't become economically viable. Right. So in the contract, that is what is in the contract. Okay, so, so let me ask you now. It is clear that mm -hmm. if we want to have that conversation, it will indeed be long. Yes. But I want to find out from you, how do we resolve it? How do we resolve so there is it? A and, plan, and when is it possible? There is a plan for it. We've already ruled that out. Since when? Within, no, three, um, two years 2019? Ago. Yeah. Uh, last year, because of our budget, we were not able to, but the previous year, we did that. What we are now saying is that a pool of money is allocated to, the, uh, uh, to all the tertiary institutions. And each contractor now can work up to whatever um, capacity that he will do. So you, you, you pull from that pool, you get it, mm -hmm. allocation is taken from that pool, so that it will, it will benefit the contractors to work to their maximum capacity. And this is something that each year we try as much as possible to allocate bulk money. And it is not based on the allocation to the university. So what can the institutions also do in the interim to help you? What, what can they do? That, that is it. So now, all, no, apart from they not awarding new projects, now the contractor who is on the project has been given, he doesn't have a ceiling to work up to. Okay. So he can work at any level and then come to the pool and then draw from the pool. Okay. So those that are actually serious in the construction business are the ones that will come and then pull from that. So, that so can you give us a year where you can say that if, if you remain at post and if at least, well, whether you remain at post or not, the systems are in place. Mm -hmm. if, if we go like this, let's say by 20 something, this thing should be a problem of the past. So what would be your projection? In two years' time. In two years' time. In two years' time. This year and mm -hmm. then in 2025, we're hoping that about 80% of ongoing projects in the tertiary sector will be completed. And this problem will be a thing of the past. It will be a thing of the past. My final question to you, Doc. Um, so I don't know with this scholarship system, whether you're factoring in child prodigies, among others. Recently I heard, was it a 9-year-old or an 11-year-old getting admission to uh, is with him, Fantipim, I think, one of those. There are these child prodigies. Some are less than 16 and the rest. How do you factor them into this system? And some of them don't have Ghana cards. How does it work for such, for such students? If you don't prove that you are, you are no, you see, you, the question that you're asking, I think it's um, at uh, the level of the um, secondary schools. Yes, we for don't. those, no, for no, those, for those rolling over those, from secondary school. Those, so the point is, if they are getting into SHS, let's say as a child prodigy, mm -hmm. this one who is what, what? 11, for example, mm -hmm. he has done age maximum 14 and is applying for the next level yeah. and requires a scholarship and yeah. all of that. I was just situating it from there. What, what then happens? How can they apply? What? No Ghana card. Why are you saying that no Ghana card? Because I know that um, at age, um, it, um, it, it is not all of those who have been targeted who have it. No, so if you don't have it, then... Those who are less than 18. You don't. Because mm. that's, that's... If you want to go to um, UK, mm. we're doing foreign scholarship. Mm. For instance, you want to go to UK and you don't have a passport. How then do you come and tell us that you want to go to UK? So that is the condition. No, you but, have, so you're telling me that if, if, a, if someone has qualified from... Mm -hmm the SHS system, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. for whatever reason, mm -hmm. doesn't have a Ghana card. Yeah. And you do know that 
apart from these age stratifications, there are some genuinely, for whatever reason, don't have the Ghana card and they qualify. They cannot go through the process, assuming they don't have a passport, they cannot go through the process because they don't have this documentation. Yeah. They can't. Yes. That is, that is the... Not even a parent can vouch for them on the no, back of their being Ghanaian? Our system doesn't work for that. So how do they prove they are Ghanaian to so you? So you have to. That is it. Birth certificate? You, you have to prove. No, I'm asking you, how will they prove? What, what will you accept? We accept the, um, the Ghana card and the, the passport as a proof of nationality. And that's it? And that's it. So at that age, the person doesn't have um, you know, a passport and the person has not yet acquired... A Ghana card, you can't do anything for them. Yes, that is that is what we've we've uh, advertised. I see. But in terms of the person doesn't have the um, uh, if the person is a needy student and that we look at it, you have to apply through the, the mm. system. Well, well, that, there is uh. there is consideration for that because <laughs> okay. in terms of you see. Um, brilliant but needy students. We, we have less than a minute to go. Yeah, so, brilliant but, but go needy ahead. students are um, those that we, we, we give through the general scholarship. But before I go, um, I would like to let people know the website that you can okay. apply to. Very quickly. That is um, scholarship.getfund.gov.gh. Scholarship.getfund.gov.gh. And um, if you have um, a question or you want to help, we have scholarship um, scholarship dash teams at getfund.gov.gh okay. and we have these three numbers that you can call 050-353-7176 Repeat each number 050-353-7176 Seven one seven six. Okay. And we have zero five zero one six zero one one two six zero five zero one six zero one one two six. Okay. And zero five zero one six zero one one two seven. You can call, and then uh, if you need any help, we'll be able to assist you. All right. Thank you so much, Doc, for coming. Thank you for Thank joining you. us on the conversation. Uh, we've been having an interaction with Dr. Richard Ampofobwedu, the Get Fund Administrator. If you didn't know, now you know. Hopefully you've been informed. Uh